I'm Stephen Foskett from uh, Tech Field Day and Foskett's.net, and I'm here in London uh, for the Truth in IT, Truth in Storage seminar. I met up with uh, Mike Wills of Backbone, and I thought I would sit down and talk with him a little bit about uh, storage. So Mike, uh, you have a hosting arm called RTW. Why don't you tell me a little bit more about that? So we set up RTW back in 2004. Um, we specialize in delivering desktop as a service, uh, voice over IP, and infrastructure as a service to mid-sized businesses. Um, we're a boutique provider um, focusing on the UK marketplace. Okay. And uh, for those, uh, those applications, what were you looking for uh, in terms of storage? Uh, principally, we were looking for a, a number of areas. Uh, one was um, high performance as and when was needed. Mm -hmm. Another one was scalability. Uh, and the third, we were relatively cautious about sort of the overall total cost of ownership as well that went with that. Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, you have to justify it based on your customers and your applications and so on. Um, you can't just buy on a whim because it's your company, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, the, the, the IOPS was absolutely critical, um, particularly uh, the read and the write IOPS. Mm -hmm. um, so we were seeing at various different times during the day, you know, particularly the morning um, where we were getting boot storms coming in, it was absolutely vital that the storage was able to handle that capacity mm -hmm. um, for that short period of time. Yeah, so that would be a real read intensive application, right? Is, is it also a write intensive? Because you talked about writes. Yep, absolutely. So uh, I suppose that when the databases are really clunking away um, and the, the storage is being utilized in that way, uh, it's being put under a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. um, so it was important that we went through a sort of full due diligence process on that mm -hmm. um, against various different vendors. Now, one thing that people will often say is they'll ask, you know, how will things perform? Uh, how will this system perform? How will that system perform? Um, how did you manage that process? Since you're uh, avowedly not a storage expert, you know, how would you evaluate storage systems and, and know whether something's going to meet your needs? Uh, I think in terms of the, the applications that we were using, we had a proof of concept environment and we had four or five different vendors lined mm -hmm. up against each other. Um, and there were certain tasks that the engineers were, were running mm -hmm. uh, in order to be able to uh, really evaluate the overall IELTS performance. Mm -hmm. um, and like you say, you know, there were some IELTS, there were some vendors that were delivering far better IOPS um, in either the read or the write capacity, but to give us the overall mm -hmm. um, solution, we were finding that uh, you know, XIO was, was well ahead of the curve. Yeah. And that's, um, it's important though, so that, to, that you tried it out with your actual uh, workload. Have you found that that was a good representation of the production workload and, and, and characteristics? Yeah. Um, you know, the minute we implemented it, we implemented it on the quiet. Mm -hmm. um, we started migrating customers over to it, um, and we had quite a number of calls that came in uh, asking why the performance had suddenly improved. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, which was a very good telltale yeah. sign. Well, that's especially important with something like desktop as a service because it's a very personal thing, right? If, if somebody's desktop is slow, uh, they're going to complain to you. Without doubt. It's all about service and delivery and the performance that comes with that. Yeah. So they were actually noticing that things were faster. That's they great. Were. Yeah. Um, now, another uh, aspect of an infrastructure, especially a service provider infrastructure, is you need flexibility um, and easy growth, of course. You need to be able to expand the system. Um, how does that work with the XIO solution? Um, well, that's obviously modular. Um, mm -hmm. So from our perspective, that made it uh, enormously easy to be able to scale. Mm -hmm. um, the previous solution that we had was not modular, um, and it was also, as a result, utilizing a lot more power, mm -hmm. um, which, as you know, in today's uh, data center yeah. world, is a very expensive um, con consumption. Yeah. Uh, and another issue that you mentioned earlier to me was um, that as systems fill up, uh, they tend to slow down. And you were concerned about that because, like you say, you want to match your, uh, you know, you want to have a modular solution that can grow with you, that you don't have to grow way out in front of it. Yeah, um, and and also we were looking for um, for value, value for money. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, the ROI is what every business mm -hmm. um, is focused on these days, mm -hmm. uh, including ourselves delivering a service. Mm -hmm. So we were looking for the the value that we were getting from the XIO, uh, XIO storage solution over other vendors. Mm -hmm. um, and with XIO, we were able to go pretty much to the end, you know, 95% of the storage utilization, at least, uh, we were yeah. able to benefit from. Before you ran into performance problems? Absolutely. Yeah. Whereas with other vendors, you know, we were having to sort of pretty much write off the final 30%. 
Um, so therefore, when you're costing mm. it out, you've got to write that off. It suddenly becomes more expensive. Yeah. Um, I suppose the, the second compelling thing that I, uh, the XIO had over other vendors was the five-year warranty, mm -hmm. um, which you know was pretty unique in the marketplace at the time, um, and that helped with the ROI. Yeah, and that you know for you that has to be a big deal as well because you know you need to make sure that the thing is running and predictable and and just keeps going as uh, you know o over the years. You can't just have something that works today and 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 fails tomorrow. Absolutely. Um, and testing, testing them as well. Yeah. Um, so as part of our due diligence process, uh, you know, we called up their support mm -hmm. um, and we put them to test and we tried um, our hardest mm -hmm. um, to to trip them up. Yeah. Um, and their support team were really very effective indeed mm -hmm. um, at resolving the problem mm -hmm. uh, under pressure. And you don't just have one model, right? You have a hybrid as well as a disc model. We do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you notice a big difference between those two? Absolutely. Um, there's a big difference in cost. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, we use it um, in certain models, um, you know, and, and work it very carefully with the particular type of applications that we're delivering out. Yeah. And uh, overall, I'd say, you know, it sounds like you're very, very happy with this solution. Um, you know, is there anything else that uh, you're looking for in the future? I mean, how are you going to change this in the future and, and do more with it? Um, we see. Um, working closely with that sort of high performance uh, theme mm -hmm. um, being uh, a sort of key driver for 2015 as we mm -hmm. move forward into the um, uh, into the cloud marketplace. Uh, software as a service is really a commodity these days. Um, so delivering a high performance desktop mm -hmm. for IT departments to then um, layer their applications on top of um, is where we're really fitting into the marketplace. So mm -hmm. we're a boutique infrastructure provider of high performance desktops, um, potentially graphics rich GPU type devices uh, that enable businesses to be able to deliver the, the compute to their organizations, but not lose control. Mm -hmm. um, so if they happen to be uh, working with Google Apps or with Microsoft uh, Office 365, they can layer those types of applications on top of the infrastructure that we provide to them. Yeah. If they want to turn up the, the CPU utilization, um, then we can scale that up with the storage and the XIO that we have underneath it in mm -hmm. order to deliver that performance. So since you're basing your uh, pitch as a company around high performance infrastructure and storage is such a key component of performance, um, it really seems like this has been a good match for you. Absolutely. Um, the XIO um, performance against the previous vendor that we were working with, a worldwide vendor, well known in the industry, um, is 25 times quicker uh, and better performing um, than that previous vendor. Uh -huh. So, you know, we've been absolutely delighted with the service that we're getting from XIO. Um, and uh, I hope that we'll continue working with them for the future. Yeah, that's just tremendous. Thank you very much for watching. Again, I'm Stephen Foskett. Uh, you can find out more about me at uh, foskets.net or at techfieldday.com. I also urge you to take a look at truthinit.com for more uh, about the seminars that uh, I'm doing here uh, in London. And um, where can we learn more about you and your services? rtwhosting.com.